Ford. All right. Welcome everybody to today's office hours. Um, we are coming back from a, a holiday here in the US and um, thanks for the, the time off last week. One of the things that uh, we have seen in the past is, you know, people are busy during uh, Thanksgiving and especially the day before and just like normally fewer attend anyway. So uh, we wanted to give you guys a break while we also had a break. Uh, today, we get to talk about some best practices. And um, we had uh, originally had Kendra was going to be doing this. And unfortunately, she had a uh, family emergency she needed to deal with. So she um, had recorded. We're going to go over, uh, show one of the recordings that she has done and um, uh, go through, I may break into it every once in a while to, to give a few inputs of my own, but um, some good content today about best practices, things that you should be doing within the system. Um, last uh, time we gathered, we were talking about, you know, preparing for 2024 and some best practices there. Uh, this is kind of her take on the things that you should be doing, getting prepared for uh, some of the things that you do each at the end of each year in preparation for the next year. So uh, we're going to be going through that. Um, for those that don't know me, some of you guys are new and welcome. If um, if you guys don't know me, my name is Mark Stepp. I'm the Chief Innovation Officer here at Realvolve and have been doing real estate technology for three decades. Uh, it is something that I enjoy doing. Um, helping you guys understand how to use technology to really become more sustainable in your business. Automate the things that you can so that uh, you have more time for your family and then also helping you understand the why. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the best practices and we're also going to have some uh, ability to, to go through some questions and answers at the end of it. So, uh, Jot down all your questions and stuff, but do not be afraid just to say, you know, unmute yourself, say, hey, Mark, I don't understand this, or uh, can you better explain whatever? Um, this is an open forum for you guys to, to share, to um, uh, be inquisitive about the things that we do here at Revolve and, and, and how the software works. So certainly, um, you know, don't hesitate to, to ask the questions. Uh, one thing that I do want you guys to be aware of, make sure everybody knows you can go out to realvolve.com forward slash office hours. And whenever you do that, it'll come to our website, but we've got a office hours playlist. Now you can go out to YouTube, you can search Realvolve and you can see all the different videos and training and different things that we have, but for office hours specifically, the things that we talk about each and every week, uh, we've got a special playlist on our website for that. Uh, one of the things that you can do whenever you come to realvolve.com forward slash office hours, it'll show you the most, the most recent office hours that was that was uh, put up on the system. Uh, in this case, our 1115, because we did not gather last week. But um, if there's something that you missed or you know a certain day, you can click on the little hamburger icon or this, this list icon up here in the uh, top right and be able to pick from any of the different days. And there's lots of great topics, lots of great content in here that even though it's, you know, older, it, it doesn't mean it's, it's any less valuable. A lot of really great content that we've created over uh, the past 60, I believe we're on 60-ish, actually, let me come down here, 69 uh, different episodes of this. And of course, this is number 70. Um, hey, I need to do something for uh, the 100. So if everybody that visits us on the 100th episode, uh, we may do something. So um, anyway, uh, definitely go there anytime that you guys have a, you know, has some free time and want to learn more about Realvolve, take a look at the topics and, and be able to utilize those. So 
just go out to robob.com forward slash office hours and uh, that'll be available. Um, we'll also do some, some additional uh, pieces on this, but for today, what I really wanna talk about is um, you know, discovering your main focuses. What are the things that you need to be focusing on in your business? And, and it's not just software, but the, the things that we do within the software um, is important and how do you organize that on a daily, weekly, monthly, even yearly processes that you do. And uh, one of the things that Kendra uh, built out for us. And let me get the link to that real quick. Um, I will uh, copy the link and put it into chat. So you guys can have access to this. Um, whenever you click on that, it will force you to basically give it a name. We're not giving you access to the master copy, but whenever you click on that link in the chat, you'll be able to open it up. It'll say, give this a name, make a copy of it, give it a name, and then just give it your name and save it into your own uh, Google Docs folder. Um, so she's gonna be talking about this. So definitely make sure that you get access to this. Um, and I'll also, for those people that are uh, watching this on, um, replay you can go out to the the youtube channel and um, pick it up in the description below so um actually guys if you have not gone out to our youtube channel and liked it and subscribed to it uh, please do that and that helps all the algorithms and stuff to uh, make sure that we um, stay relevant and stay out there in the world so uh important that you do that so that defining your best practices look at and chat get that make a copy of it and then you can utilize that as we go along so what i want to do is um bring over the video and i want to make sure that as we start this everybody can hear it and um go ahead and press play if you don't hear it type in chat or, or reach out and say, you know, I'm having a problem hearing it. So I think we got set up to do it right, but just- Morning, sure. everybody. Lots of stuff to talk about today. Okay, so if you have this define your best practices worksheet in front of you, you're gonna click file and you're gonna select make a copy. And that's gonna allow you to create a copy of your own so that you can um, edit it, take these out, update them, add your own um, as we go through it. And so what I want to do is kind of show you, you know, the purpose of this document and then also what that looks like inside of Railvolve and some takeaways from this. So um, the first thing that you'll see is you have a section called Define Daily Objectives, Weekly Objectives, Monthly Objectives, Quarterly Objectives, and Yearly Objectives. Um, we've put a few examples of what this could look like in here, but it's really meant for you to kind of um, have a brainstorming session and, and decide what your um, best practices or, or what your goals are going to be in terms of, of what you do repetitively. Now, this differs from things like um, your the majority of your other systems and processes, workflows specifically, that are trigger-based. So what that means is that, let's say you put a buyer under contract right? We're going to do that based on an event or a trigger, as I call it. Um, so the action or the trigger of that buyer going under contract is going to cause you to start your workflow. There's other things that necessarily don't have as well-defined triggers. And so we're going to talk about those things that, that you should be doing and that, um, and some tools and tricks and things like that um, to kind of get the ball rolling if you're not doing some of these. And I think the first thing starts with planning. Okay. So just realizing that there's things that you should be doing daily. There's things that you should be doing weekly, quarterly, et cetera. Okay. And that may be different for everybody. Each one of them should have an objective or, you know, a goal in mind when you're doing that. And really the goal here is to just not wake up and wing it. 
right? And so too often you wake up today and you're like, well, what am I going to do? And pick up your phone, who's reached out to you? And who, let's check the email. And then next thing you know, three hours of your day has gone by. You've gotten 37 phone calls and, and you didn't really do anything, right? And so I think the more productive approach is to structure things so that you control your day rather than letting you be reactive to the things in your environment. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna talk about um, a few things here. So let's start with defining your daily objectives. These two things inside of Real Evolve, I cannot stress highly enough. Okay, you should be doing both of these daily. Um, week daily, and I don't want you working seven days a week. And so checking for due activities. And so if you go back to what we were talking about, about systems and processes, if you are, when you get a listing, creating a property inside of Realvolve and then starting your pre-MLS workflow, if you are going under contract and starting contract to close workflows, each of those things um, are going to assign you tasks to do. A lot of the times those um, activities are, you know, conditional on another thing. Let's say a week before closing, I'm going to send out an email to a buyer that is going to remind them that they need to deal with your utilities um, and they need to prepare for closing, get their money together, all of that good stuff, right? What is the likelihood that you are going to remember every time, oh, it's seven days before closing, I should send this email and then, you know, write that email from scratch, not miss anything, remember what property it's on, things like that, right? So those workflows are really meant to define the things that we can predictably say this is going to happen at this time based off of this trigger. And so when we're running those workflows, activities are going to be assigned and they're going to be due. And so once you get in the habit, once you've built out your workflows and you're working off of your triggers, meaning, you know, I started this workflow, what you need to do then, the work is completing the activities. And hopefully your activities are written in a way where they're as automated as possible. They're using merge fields. So, you know, an email that would have taken you 10 minutes is now taking you two minutes or less, hopefully. And so um, we're, we're going to check our activities and ideally get them down to zero. And so what that looks like in real ball, I have a few places I can check for my activities. I can come here to this icon that is a circle with a check mark in it. It tells me the total number of activities. If I hover over this icon, it also tells me here, it says activities. But if I click on this, it's going to change the view. It's going to show me things here on the left. And then I also have the option to click on this other activity total, the Chevron, which will open up um, this all activities view here, and I can actually work out of here, right? So I can come and I can click this, all right, I did that. Let's go ahead and send Joe Byer this email. I'm gonna select my action, hit run. I've sent this email a million times, I'm comfortable with it, and I send it off, okay? So I can actually complete my activities here. As you can see here, this indicates that there's a checklist associated with this activity where this is a simple to do. So I can click in here also to get an additional idea of what I need to do. This is telling me to prepare a CMA for an upcoming home purchase anniversary. I did that. I'm going to select my action and I'm going to send that. Again, you probably want to preview those emails if you're not super comfortable with the system. I'm just doing this for demonstration. All right, so my goal, and, and these don't actually have a date assigned to them, but as you can see here, these do, and this is a demo account, so these are old. Ideally, anything that you should be caught up, okay? And so there's a few things that can kind of help you organize this information if you do have a big kind of to-do list. If I come into filters over here under activities, I can choose the way that all activities are displayed. And let's say that I want, I prefer to see all my addresses grouped together. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that. And as you can see, it um, reconfigured my addresses. I can also click here on this address, which would throw me into this transaction and our listing. And I could see the activities that are due in this view as well. Um, so another way to kind of just do the same thing. I can work out of this activity view the same way I can um, work out of the 
view all activity. The difference being I'm only seeing things from 123 Main Street on the other one. This one's allowing me to see everything. Um, the other thing that I can do here, if I have a large team, is select this head icon and see whose activities I want to see. Because if you're a team leader, you have admin access, you may be seeing a lot of other people's activities. And so it may be beneficial for you to kind of drill down and see um, <clears throat> what it is that you have to do. This color icon, if you have set up your activities to be color coded, then you can say, you know, I want to see things with this specific color. I don't have anything with that, so I'll take that off. I can come in here and, and um, sort by activity type. So if I want to knock out all my text messages, I can select those and I can go ahead and take care of those four text messages. The other thing I can do is come in and access my activities through my calendar view. When I click on calendar, under more, it's going to follow that same principle where if you have multiple people in your team, you may have to select whose activities you want to take a look at. You may want to look at everyone's and you also have this convenient mind button that will just show you the things that you have to do. You can also choose between activities for today, the day, the week, the month. Um, and kind of see that view there. Also, you'll notice anything that's all day is up here, meaning that it's due today, but it doesn't have a specific time adjusted with it. I can click in here and create a new activity. Say I talk to somebody and they ask me to call them back later. I can, I don't think they'll be asking me to call them at 5 a.m., but just in case. Um, I can also, I have some options to, to click and drag and drop within this calendar view as well. And I, I can also complete these activities. So if I select or I click once here, if I add a note here, that note will be stored under whatever contact property or transaction this is associated with. I have the option to edit it and I have the option to just complete it here. Once I do that, you can see that the color of this activity changed. It now has lines in it indicating that this is complete. And this is yet another view for me to complete those activities. So um, daily, for sure, you should be checking your activities. The next thing I would highly suggest is that you define, and you can do this a certain you know way. I, I know certain people say, I'm going to call five clients a day. I'm going to call 10 clients a day, you know, whatever it is. I'm more of a fan of touches. And what I mean by touches is I don't think you have to pick up the phone and call somebody every single day, but I do think it needs to be a personalized touch. Meaning that if that person that you're communicating with feels like that it's canned um, and personal or not something that you are specifically taking five minutes out of your day to do for just them, then, th then that, um, is not received as well as a personal touch. Personal touches can be a variety of things. They can be text messages. They can be, wait, see, I saw you at the grocery store. They can be uh, a phone call. They can be um, a Facebook message. They can be something that just showed that person that you took five minutes out of your day for them. So let's say that we're going to do that. I personally, I'm going to set a goal for um, for 30 minutes, okay? Because sometimes, let's say I get, you know, chatty Kathy on the phone. We may be on the phone for 15 minutes just catching up, and that's fine. I don't want my activities to define my day. I want to time block my day, and I'll sh I will talk more about this with weekly objectives. But that's another reason that I'm not a, a big fan of saying I'm going to call five people today because that five people could be four four voicemails. Um, you know, our five voicemails, it could be five 30 minute conversations. Okay. So it's so hard to define your day or to get organization in a chaos environment when you don't have clearly defined best practices. So I think the better option is, you know, I'm going to do something today for 30 minutes and that is going to reach people that are in my sphere. And what I mean by sphere is somebody that that, that you have a direct connection with. You've met before, you, you they either know somebody that's gonna do business um, or you hope to do business with them in the future, but I'm going to do something 
so that that person knows that they were either in my thoughts or that I tried to communicate with them today. And I'm going to do that for 30 minutes. And I'm probably going to time block that for the morning because I can control my mornings a little bit better than I can my afternoons sometimes, especially when you look at if you're showing properties, you're probably showing properties in the afternoon also. So what does that look like? There are several ways that you can be doing this. Um, I've said this many, many, many times, huge fan of the contact cross section. Um, I'm going to, in December, we're gonna have a kind of deep dive into the contact cross section. We have a few office hours videos out there touching on the contact cross section, but I really just want to take a deep dive and let that um, hour be you setting up that contact cross section if you intend to do that. So we'll get that done this month. So what the contact cross section is, if you're not familiar with it, it is an intuitive way for the system to know whether or not it is time for you to contact somebody based on what bucket you put them in. And what I mean by bucket is over here on the left. This is defined by stage and status. So if I make the commitment to give any of my contacts that I intend to have frequent communication with a stage and a status, um, and I get them on this contact cross section, then they're gonna show up every so often. And how often they show up is based off of this left pillar, suspect, prospect, lead, client, and past client. The good thing about this is that you can pick your own path because, you know, to me, a suspect, I would contact a suspect every two days, you know, but maybe somebody else would do every three days. Maybe another person would do every day. You know, I think there's that consensus that if you get a new lead that you have not contacted to, you're going to make so many kind of contact attempts. I think there's some debate as to the frequency of that, you know, whether you're doing it, you know, call day one, text day two, you know, things like that. I think that, that testing and analytics comes into that. We'll talk a little bit more about that too. Um, but the point is, is that you have to make an initial determination on how often I'm going to try to contact somebody. So with past, past clients, typically that's about once a quarter. So I'm going to do something to reach out, make communication with a past client or somebody that I have an established relationship with once a quarter. So the great thing about this widget is that if it has been over a quarter since you've talked to that person, then the system can raise its hand and, and they can say, hey, it's time to contact this person. And so we can see Sally Church here shows up as a person, one of three people in my past client like bucket that I need to contact, meaning it has been over 90 days since I have contacted them. So when I don't have to spend the time to come in here and determine who needs to be contacted next, all I need to do is come in here and say, any, the, any of these boxes that are not at zero indicates that this is the person that I need to be in contact with. And so, I can come in, I can click here, I can say, okay, Sally Church, I'm going to, you know, pick up my phone, I'm going to shoot her a text message. Hey, Sally, it's been a while. Hope you and the kids are doing great. You don't have to be selling all the time. Okay. I think that so many agents get wrapped up in the idea that everything needs to be pre planned and, you know, almost salesy, something like that. People want to do pe relation or they want to do business with people they have relationships with. And so think about cultivating the relationship when you're, um, you know, managing this contact cross section. So again, daily, I'm going to check my contact cross section. I'm going to come in. I'm going to select someone. If I select this date or this calendar view icon here, if I update the last call date or the last personal visit date, I back out of here. Now Sally's gone. It went from three to two because the system said Sally is good now. She has been contacted within 90 days. And in another 90 days from the last date I contacted her, she'll show up again. And so that's as simple as that, right? So then it just becomes, I need to click in here and see who I'm going to try and contact. So again, we'll dive deeper into this, but daily best practices, complete your activities, work on your contact cross section for a defined period of time. I set a timer for 30 minutes when I'm time blocking. So whatever I get done in that 30 minutes is what I get done. And that leads me to the next thing that we've put on our 
define weekly objectives. <laughs> if you do not have a, um, you know, best practices calendar, an ideal schedule calendar, something like that, I highly suggest that you do that. Um, give you an example. Inside of, um, this is Google Calendar. I can, I have my main calendar. I probably would not create my ideal schedule on my main calendar, but what I would do is come under my calendars and create a sub calendar. I would call that sub calendar, my ideal schedule, and I would time block. Them, okay. So, um, let's say I start my day at 9am on Mondays, I'm going to come in and for the first 30 minutes, I'm going to work on my contact cross section. Okay. This may be different for you, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat every weekday, Monday through Friday. I can use these colors if I wanted to. Um, maybe these colors mean different things to you. Maybe a red block means I do this every single day. It doesn't waver. I don't care if somebody calls me and wants to see a house in 30 minutes. I do this. This is a non-negotiable. Okay. Whereas maybe these yellow things are things that, you know, I, I need to get them done, but there's a little bit, um, you know, I can move it around or I can adjust it if I need to. The other thing, if you're using something like Calendly or, you know, whatever, this is on a sub calendar, but if you decided to do this on your main calendar, if you left this free, meaning that like another service, Calendly, et cetera, was reading your calendar, this block would still show available or bookable or schedulable, um, but free or busy is going to take that off the books. It's going to show it. So when I do that, now I've got this. And so the goal is, and so maybe every day I want to do showings from 115 or appointments, listing appointments. Right? I could do this. So I'm basically telling myself, these are the things that I ideally want to do. And I'm going to leave this one um, blue. There's a lot of flexibility here. And I'm going to do it free because I'm going to set up a calendar service <coughs> where my, my clients can actually book themselves um, an appointment. And so here I've got it, right? And so when you start doing this, you just start narrowing down your... Um, your things that you have to do, your available time. And you can really make some decisions on dollar productive activities or where you're spending your time or are you doing the right things? You can question, am I getting to the computer and working at this time by this, you know, every morning and things like that. So highly, highly suggest putting something like this into place. Tracking your performance. Um, another thing we are going to talk about this month is um, leaning more towards a data-driven approach when it comes to real estate. So, you know, why are you making the decisions that you're making? Why are you spending the money that you're spending? Are you getting a return on that investment? And how do you know? Um, you know, what what are the statistics behind your contacts? And, um, you know, all of the things that, that you should be relying on to make decisions. Do you have that information somewhere where we can use it, repurpose it, and um and kind of make the best decision you know off of the data so we're gonna kind of lean into that and see what possibilities are available there you've got your quarterly objection objectives that you can define next year as goals and this is yearly reviewing your workflow and your systems updating your holiday templates updating your um happy birthday home purchase home sale anniversary templates so you don't have to change your happy birthday um, or home purchase anniversary template. But the thought here is you're sending that email every year, right? So it, is it likely that somebody would, you know, maybe not realize you sent them the same template last year? Possibly. But I think the best practice would be to set an activity um, that reminds you to do that. And so if 
every year I was going to update certain templates, I could set a recurring activity to myself. And how I'm going to do that in Realvolve is I'm going to come in here to my dashboard and underneath activities, there's this bar that says, what do you have to do? And I'm going to tell myself I have to update holiday and and it could just, you could make three different tasks if you want to, but for the sake of showing you, and happy birthday email templates. I'm going to do that the first week of December. I'm going to assign it to myself. And I'm going to create that. When I create it, I created a one-time, one-off activity. I need to be doing this every year. And so when I edit this activity, I'm going to come into the repeat. I first have to change the schedule to all day. Then I'm going to click repeat, and I'm going to define how often I want this activity to show back up. In this case, I want to show it up. I want to show it back. I want it to show back up yearly. And so I've said repeat yearly every one year. I could do it every, you know, three years or whatever it is that you define. There's a lot of customization here. And then I have to say, well, how long am I going to do it? I can just have it go indefinitely, which is probably what I'll do. I could say I'm going to do it for five times at five years in this case and then have it stop. Or I can pick a date that it would stop. But in this case, it makes sense to just have this come back every year because this is a best practice that I'm going to do. Um, you know, throughout my career. So I'm going to hit save. And I'm going to hit save again. All right, now I've updated that. So it's as simple as that. Now, December 1st, I'm going to have an activity show up that tells me to update my holiday templates. I'm going to check it off and it's going to come back this time next year. Um, same thing with reviewing your workflows and your systems. If you come into your um, into Realvolve and click on workflows. Over here on the left, you can see an entire list of the workflows that you have. So I think it's a it's a good idea to just system plan in general and you know decide what workflows you're using, what you're not, and then just take a high level look at the the things that you are doing within your workflow. So if I select this workflow in this drop down, I can see here what is this activity, what type is it. Um, when is it due and who's doing it? And so even at a glance here, I can kind of make some high level decisions, you know, and oh, well, you know, this appraisal order, I've got it 12 days after acceptance, but every time we keep changing that two days, you know, and that, that would be a reminder. Maybe I need to click edit here and change this. Um, I don't want it 10 days. Maybe now I want it um, or 12 days. Now I want it 10 days. And so I can make those changes and it's a good idea, I think, to look at those those yearly. So take a copy of this, work on it. Um, and like I said, good things to come. We're going to talk about, um, you know, getting your contact cross section set up if you haven't already. We're going to talk about putting some, some data driven decision making into place um, in our upcoming office hours. So I would step one, get this done, and um, we'll see you next time. All right, so she went over a lot of different little things. And one thing that I want to kind of expand on is uh, definitely because we're, we're going through this 2024, getting ready for it, what are the things that we should do? Doing the, the one part as far as the reminder each year um, Definitely is important. Make sure that you've got that reminder on your calendar on December 1st. Uh, she has it pop up and say, okay, go, you know, check your holiday items and make sure that you've done them. The challenge there is, is from year to year, you don't always remember what you've got set up and how you've got it set up. And, um, you know, that high level that she talked about is extremely important going through and identifying the, the workflows that you use, you don't use, change them as needed. I mean, that you definitely need to do, but there are certain tasks in some of your activities, which may be um, using like tags. Uh, I've got a, a specific example where 
If I do a new listing this year, um, I tag the, the contact with listing 2023. If I do a closing, it may say, you know, close 2023. I don't want that 2023 to roll into 2024 as 2023. I want it to be 2024, right? So one of the things that, that I've taught for years is um, the, the use of the tags. So you can very easily um, come into the search area and um, I have one called annual changes. So what this is, is each of my workflows that I know that I've got something that needs to be changed every year, be it the birthday uh, message, a template, a, a workflow or whatever. If there's something that I want to change in it every year, tag it. Tag it as annual changes. And then whenever that calendar event comes up, you come into your workflows, you, you do a search for annual changes, whatever terminology you put in there. Um, that's just the one I use. And then it pulls up any workflow that has uh, annual changes in the tags area. At that point, then I can go in there. And it's like, okay, well, um, whenever I send my thank you, uh, message to my seller. Um, I at that same time, I know I also tag them. So I can come over here to my tags and lo and behold, there's the listing 23. What I can do is delete that off and and add in the listing 2024. Um, you know, this is something you probably don't want to do until, you know, maybe January 1st. Maybe these are some things instead of December 1st, like uh, Kendra was using, but making sure that the things that you do annually, that way you're not having to go in there and re-tag something after they've been tagged and, and go through that process. The exact same thing. Once you've made your change here, you click save and and you, you're you're updating that activity, click the update, and then at that point, it's good going forward. So any new listings, any new closings that you create, uh, the closings piece exactly the same um, on this one, the RV updates, um, what we do here, same type of thing where we uh, add or remove tags and we've got to close 2023 on it. So, you know, changing that to 2024 um, is something I need to do annually. So just creating that tag on the main workflow description information as annual changes just gives me an easy way to isolate all the, the workflows that need to be changed at, at any given point. Same type of thing for your templates. So if I come into the templates area and let's say um, annual changes, do a search on that. And there's my, my birthday email. You know, change out the image, change out the message. Um, you know, if if nothing else, I mean, you can go in there and, and use ChatGPT and say, you know, rewrite this message for 2024, you know, or whatever, and um, have have a different message, have a different image, uh, save it, and then go to the next one. By doing this you can knock out all of your different templates, you know, in just a matter of minutes and, and getting them, instead of going through, searching for them, uh, trying to remember which ones need to be changed each year, tag them and, and make sure that that's uh, something that you do regularly. Um, she talked about time blocking and time blocking is, uh, is extremely important. I hope everybody is doing some form of time blocking themselves. Um, you know, isolating the the times when you do certain things uh, repetitively. You know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I do certain things at ten o'clock, and and I think she hit upon it. If you will time block, one of the things that happens 
um, if you're not careful, is that you go in, you start checking, you know, may, maybe you want to start checking Facebook messages or you want to start checking your email messages. And all of a sudden you look up and you've lost an hour. And it's because you don't really have a good plan if you're not doing some kind of time blocking and and knowing that, hey, I've got a, an X amount of, of time available and let's get it get it done, get, get the, the, the juices flowing and uh, not, not really waste that time. So that's another, another really good one. Um, now, um, you know, everybody knows, uh, or if you know me, you know that I'm big on um, using AI and technology and stuff. One of the things that, um, and it's, you know, not unrelated to, um, to real Volve necessarily, um, some of it is, but, you know, you can use ChatGPT as um, just go in there and say, act as a real estate coach. Um, it'll, you know, give you some, some basic things of things that you should be doing. And then maybe you come in here and just say, you know, help me organize my 2024 business plan, um, you know, that that drive my year, my month, my week, and my daily objectives and, and go through, ask me questions to help me plan and organize my year uh, using those best practices. And then it, it goes through and it will start breaking out and, and asking you questions about your long-term vision, your, your past uh, performances and, and your goals and the things that you want to achieve. And then as you start going through this and answering these questions that it has, it can start diving deeper into what you do um, in your business and helping you organize that. And you know, utilizing this information inside of Realvolve to help it write uh, content for you, help you to write um, the goals and, and things that you do on a, on a daily, weekly, monthly basis is something that's going to help, um, help you stand out. It, it's interesting to me, and, and I just had this conversation um, last night with a buddy of mine. Um, ChatGPT has so much content, so much information that it has gathered and and has available to it as resource and it's just like having a coach in your pocket it's just being able to um come up with ideas and and thought processes and stuff to be able to um go out there and if if you will just start using it i actually in the chat real quick how many of you are using ChatGPT on a you know daily basis? If you're not, it may be something that that you need to start looking at. And you know, even if it's not daily, I, I use it daily um, for the things that that I do. It helps me organize my thought processes. I can say, okay, this is my problem. This is my challenge. How would be best to um, to alleviate the the, the problem? And because of all of its inherent knowledge, uh, it then can give me a, a plan. It can give me code. It can do a lot of, of different pieces. And you know, some of the um, capabilities now are to a point, and we're going to be sharing this uh, later, is um, you know, some interface capabilities. So you can actually do some stuff with inside ChatGPT to actually do stuff within Realvolve. So, um, uh, something to to look forward to on that. We'll give you more information on that. Uh, use it daily. Need to learn more. Uh, when I use it, I love it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, um, any questions about some of what we just went over as far as the, the recording from Kendra or any other questions that you may have. We've got a little bit of time left. Otherwise,
using it daily for emails. Um, yeah, I want to make sure that you guys are aware too. You know, of course, you can go in, use ChatGPT, write different things. Uh, just to make sure that you guys know is in the templates, like if you come into uh, the template area here, we've got this message. Um, maybe um, maybe you want to come in here and you've got a, um, in your area, you have a high number of Spanish speaking um, uh, buyers and sellers, and you want to, you know, make sure that you do stuff with them. You might have a special workflow designed for Spanish speaking or you know, any other language as well, but maybe you don't speak it well yourself. One of the things that you can do within Realvolve, it's actually built in. You just have to make sure that you have the integration, um, the API connectivity to it. And you can certainly do it in ChatGPT itself um, without that. But by clicking on the ChatGPT uh, icon here, it brings you into a real vol version of ChatGPT. And one of the things that you can do is just have it do certain things for, for us. So um, because I it knew I had a message, it says include the message information that's in there. I could say something like, you know, I'll rewrite this message for um, um, 2024 birthdays and generate. So that, you know, very simply can go in there um, and it, it can rewrite that. You could also go in there and say um, birthdays in Spanish. And um, it'll go through and, you know, rewrite the thing. You can then come down here and say, you know, replace the message and, and then reformat it how you want. Uh, you'll notice that because there are merge fields in there, it leaves the merge fields as they are. So you don't have to, you know, worry about that. If you are writing something from scratch, brand new, where maybe you, you don't want to include the previous message, but you do want to uh, include a greeting and a signature. Um, you could say something like this, where, you know, um, write an exciting and inspirational um, birthday message. Um, and I'm going to take off in Spanish um, and then just click on the create and then it goes through and it will um, regenerate and you know make a a message for you a long in this case a long message uh, one of the things that you know it may be too long you can go in there and say shorten this or, or whatever but once you do that you can say replace the message click on OK and boom, there's the entire message rewritten and, and for you to be able to utilize. So some great capabilities actually built into Realvolve, but certainly using ChatGPT, copy, paste it in here, um, does the, the exact same type of thing. The, the advantage of doing it within Realvolve is that, you know, it does know our merge fields and, and being able to include those inside the message makes it a lot easier. But uh, any questions, any other questions? Let me see here. Actually, we did see this. Um, no, thanks, but I enjoyed the presentation. Great. Thanks for today's session. Need to leave. All right. No. Um, anybody else? Actually, Nicole, looks like you may be the last. No, there's a couple. No, Nicole's, Nicole's the, the holdout. So, um, hey, Mark. Any questions that you may have? No, not, no, not that's not just um, more personal to our business, but I've got some emails in already. So things are good. That is awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, thank well, you so much for today. If, if there's anything else that we can do for you, certainly reach out. We're happy to, to help where we can. So Thanks everybody a have a great rest of your week and we'll talk to you later.